All right, so welcome back. And um, we want to talk to uh, our correspondent uh, who brought us that story, uh, Hafiz Tijani. Uh, he's joining us from um, the Ashanti region. Hafiz, good morning. Good morning, Dave. Yes, uh, welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you very much. All right, so um, Hafiz, the situation we saw there at the school no student in Ghana should live under such circumstances. Um, we, have you been able to speak to uh, either the headmaster or somebody uh, responsible at the school to find out if they knew that the building was in a certain condition that needed repairs and what did they do about it? Well, Dave, I didn't guess the question very well, uh, but you're talking about the situation at the Ediraman Anglican Senior High School, yes. where we learned on Sunday evening where the students were going for their dinner in the evening, and there was a rainstorm that brought down the roof of the dining hall. So the structure, let me just paint a brief picture about the structure. It's a kind of pillar that has been erected and the wood has been used to dan the uh, roof of the structure in a form of pavilion. And this structure, we are told, has been used by the school for over 10 years. And the structure, due to the weakness and the cracks on the walls of the pillars that is holding it, uh, it's no longer very strong to uh, hold onto. So that brought down the wind or the rainstorm brought down the roof of the facility at a time when the students were taking their food. And 50 of them were injured, 47 on Sunday were sent to the Edura Government Hospital for treatment. And the next day, on Monday, three of them were also sent to the place. As we speak now, the students have been discharged. One other student who sustained or who had a fracture in the leg has been referred to a specialist facility. So that is the situation in the school currently. Uh, so have As we speak now... Mm, yeah, have it. Um, so uh, have all the students been discharged as we speak? Yes, we are told they have been discharged by the medical um, officials at the hospital. Okay, so except the, the last one who has a fracture, or that one too has been treated and, and, and discharged. Okay, that person has been, that student has been referred to a specialist hospital. Okay. Uh, the doctors were saying that they have taken x-ray of mm. the condition and they have referred it so the specialist hospital will take care of that. Okay. So the question I asked earlier was about the responsibility of those who supervise the school, whether they, there was anybody there who, uh, took, who would take responsibility for, uh, you know, having seen that the building had cracks already and had done nothing about it. I don't know whether there's any conversation going down this direction as to things like criminal negligence and all of that. It was a storm, but there are other buildings in the neighborhood that didn't go down. There are other buildings on the school campus that were not affected by the storm. So it cannot be, it cannot be described as an act of God in that sense. There's some kind of negligence involved here. Have you spoken to any of the school authorities um, regarding this? Well, the incident also raised concerns about the inadequate facilities at the school. And you look at this structure that was used as a dining hall, you have similar structures that have been used as the classrooms for the students. Uh, another classroom block has been put up by the school, but that is yet to uh, be commissioned for the students to uh, use it. And these other structures I'm talking about are built in the same way as the dining hall, the collapsed dining hall structure. So the school authorities said that they had written or they continue to write letters to remind government about some abandoned projects in the school and 
the lack of uh, facilities in the school or the inadequate facilities in the school so that the government can step in. But the response has not been done yet. And for the structure they were using before it collapsed, that was the nature and they had to manage with the facility because they didn't have any option. Now that the structure has also collapsed, the students are serving uh, their food or they are being served uh, by the school authorities when it comes to the food under the trees. And I pose this question to the municipal chief executive for the um, university, Dumasi, and he says that for now, that is the only option they have on the table. And they will have to uh, allow the students to take the dining under the trees in the open so that after uh, some time when they are able to come in with an intervention, getting through the get fund to get the facility or a permanent facility for the students as a dining hall. If not, when it's raining, they will have to resort to the classrooms to serve the food. So Half that's all, uh, the option for the school now. Right, now you mentioned that um, there's a structure that has been completed, right? Awaiting, yes, awaiting commissioning, classroom block. classroom block. Did they tell yes. you why we are still waiting for the commissioning? Well, we're told that uh, the regional minister and other officials from the education sector would be uh, within the school on Friday to commission that structure. But even with that structure, the structure that uh, collapsed affected the rainstorm also affected portions of that building, the, the, the roofing of that building. So that has to also be maintained before the official commissioning can be done. Mm -hmm. do, do you have an idea the student population of the school? Well, so it's a day and boarding school. So okay. we have the boarding, uh, the boarding students, we are talking about 800 students. And for the day students, we are talking about 200. So we are talking about uh, uh, thousand students, the whole student population. Interesting. Yeah. Right. So um, currently, it's just a dining hall. But there was also a fire incident that happened on Monday. Uh, come again. I'm asking about the fire incident on the campus on Monday. No, it was not a fire incident. It was this incident that okay. happened at the school. Okay, so there was no fire because there were other reports the that a, there was fire. some fire. So, so nothing like that happened? No, nothing like that happened. It was just this incident that happened. Okay. Now, does the school uh, have an infirmary? The school does not have an infirmary. Uh, so they had to resort to the... Um, a draft government hospital when the incident happened, when mm. the fire officers came. You know, the students, some of them sustained minor injuries. So mm -hmm. for those who sustained minor injuries, they mm. were treated and discharged when they got to the hospital. They, uh, they were treated on Sunday and discharged the next morning. That was Monday. But, so uh, the school doesn't have an infirmary. That was why the officers, the NADMO officials, and the fire um, officers, as well as the school authorities, conveyed the students, the injured students, to the Israel government. Right, um, so we'll wait for the update regarding the commissioning of the new, um, newly constructed classroom block. That is on Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Is it tomorrow or next week? Yes, yes, tomorrow is Friday, so that'll be tomorrow. But uh, for now, the school really need urgent intervention and the municipal chief executive and the NADMO uh, were saying that they would have to write to the get fund so that they can come in and look at the place, the abandoned structures, they can complete them and also give them a permanent and befitting dining hall facility. Right, thank you very much Hafiz. Uh, we'll come back to you later when you have the update. That was a nice shirt. Mm. <laughs> and so half is um, our yeah. Shanti Regional <clears throat> Correspondent joining us from our studios mm. in Kumasi. Yeah. So this is where we are. And this is some of mm. the issues that we have, that a, a project has been 
completed. Yeah. But we are just waiting for the regional minister to come and commission yeah. it. And yeah. so that structure is just um, sitting. Yeah. I, I think a lot of the things that we do, um, they don't make any sense. Uh, if you think about it from a certain nationalistic point of view. Um, if you think about it with political lenses, mm -hmm. then everything makes sense. You yeah. know? Um, but I think that we need to do better than what we're doing. I don't know why the regional minister needs to come and commission. Yeah. It's not opening a school. Mm -hmm. It's commissioning a building yeah. in a school. Mm -hmm. A school that has existed probably long yeah. before he mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. into office. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? Of uh, it's like, for me, there's a certain, we just need to grow up. You know, as a people, some let's, kind of lethargic let's, attitude. Exactly. When I have time, yeah, I'll go you there. know, and this is some people's lives. And you're people's talking lives about. are on the line. We, are, we, you know, first of all, we're not even doing the things properly because you remember what Happy said. Happy said that yeah, the the new structures are in the same design as the one that go that collapsed. Mm -hmm. So it's not as though. It's even like an improved version. So, so that is the other classrooms, other things they have to do, mm. you know, is in this same structure. Yes. But I think the mm. new one, my problem is the new one they've constructed, you mm. know, because of what happened, the roof also has also an issue. Has issues, yeah. You know, so yeah. what kind of roofs are we using? And, <sighs> you know, the, the kind of infrastructure we are putting up, how are we making sure that this can, uh, I mean, stand the test of time? Yeah. You know, the rains, the strong winds and everything that mm. comes with it. Mm. Are mm. we... Um, mindful of how long, how durable we want yeah. some of these projects to last or to be, or we are just looking at we need to do something, so let's just work quickly for a structure that the people can be in and then we just have our life back and yeah. we move on. Yeah. What thoughts are really being put into all these? Yeah, all right. So, you know, the thing, <laughs> you see the design of the building, the the half block building and then you put the wood on top of it mm -hmm. you know and I'm, I'm even wondering if that's also like best practice and I don't know where they got that that, that idea from to do that of course it must be cheaper mm -hmm. you know but then at what expense yeah. you know anyway we have um, a co we're gonna have a conversation very shortly about um, a measles outbreak um, but that will be after this short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more chic and spice than ever. Join the League of Exceptional Sisters as they come to the rescue of relationships with the all-new season of Sister, Sister. Be it gut-wrenching personal secrets, jaw-dropping partner shenanigans, or the cringe-worthy deeds of family and friends, our sisters will be here to help you weave through the simplest and most complicated relationship issues. Sister, Sister airs every Thursday at 7 p.m. on 97.3 City FM and every Friday at 9 p.m. on City TV. Sister Sister is sponsored by Kel Kids Toothpaste, the Ghana AIDS Commission, and Onga. Roses are red, violets are blue, Valentine's is approaching, so get ready for Shades of Love too. Shades of Love with Aquabot 2023 is here again. Get your shade of red or pink outfits ready. Hit up your special one and plan a night of unbelievable fun and a whole lot of love. Listening to Aquabot's back-to-back hits. Shades of Love 2023 with Aquabot will be the night to remember for all those who love love and happening in both Aquabot Cry 
Star at N Kumase. Date on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February 2023 at La Palm Royal Beach Hotel in Accra and on the 18th of February at Ike's Cafe and Grill in Kumase. Tickets are going for VVIP for 400 Ghana cities, VIP for 300 Ghana cities, standard tickets for 200 Ghana cities and for table bookings and cabanas and all enquiries, kindly call 027-227-7757. Get your tickets at the City TV and City FM, Joy FM, YFM, Accra Mall, Elisa's Restaurant, Jolie Junction, Metro TV, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Shades of Love with Aqua 2023, it will be awesome. Media Partners. Powered by Think Media Expert. Eight uh, months now, but w after we go, uh, we are uh, up to uh, forty days. We went there first, and they and they gave us the the, uh, the vaccine. Other months we we went there and they gave us the other one. But the last one, whenever we went there, that the vaccine is not there. So how so long have you been going to the hospital? I went there so, like three months now. And they, and they are still tell, tell, telling me that the vaccine is not yet come. So they decided to go to other hospitals. But I heard some people saying that other hospitals, there is the same problem. Many people are saying they went there and it's not there. So for that matter, I'm not able to go. If the disease attacked my child, I'll be sad or I'll be disturbed. So I didn't go. I don't want the disease to attack my child. So I'm, I, I've not been going to public places. Because the disease is is very horrible, so we don't want it to attack our children. So we are appealing, appealing the government to, to to provide the medicines for us. Right. So this is some of the issues that we are dealing with: measles outbreak in the northern region. Look, at a point um, somewhere around 2020, we came down on measles cases as low as 88, mm. and now only in the and this is in Ghana. Now in the northern region, we've recorded um, 70 children. That is over 70 children, you know, uh, with measles. This is very unfortunate. Yeah. You know, and um, no vaccines mm. to handle this. So it means we are going to be recording more. Yeah, no. So um, in 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 in, in the public health, mm -hmm. um, eradication is a disease is considered eradicated if there's twelve months, twelve clear, clear months, months of no transmission, mm -hmm. right, of the disease. Now, for us to have come down all the way from thousands to eighty-eight mm -hmm. as of twenty twenty, it means that we were well on our way to going to eradication yeah. right how is it that you know just in the north alone we've gotten an outbreak to the extent that 70 children mm -hmm. have been infected yeah let's just look at that story there mm -hmm. on citynewsroom.com uh, measles outbreak over 70 children in northern region infected that story uh, written by Diana Ngon, a uh, correspondent in the northern region. The northern region has recorded over 70 positive cases of measles among children since October, uh, la um, last October 2022 um, to date. And the situation is worsening. The region currently has run out of measles vaccines. So far, the cases have been detected in four districts, including Karaga, Sagnarigu, Tamale, and Gushegu, where it was first detected. According to city news sources, even though there hasn't been any death as a result of the outbreak, there have been severe cases where children have had to be put on oxygen in some health facilities. 
Sometime last year, the Central Hospital in Tamale had its pediatric unit closed down due to an outbreak of measles. Meanwhile, health officials in the region are tight-lipped on the outbreak. I wonder why. <laughs> Nonetheless, a release issued by the Regional Health Directorate and addressed to all district health directorates and cited by City News confirmed cases of measles. Now, I quote, given the current season, which presents as one of the greatest risks for the transmission of disease, or, or transmission of measles, sorry, district health directorates and health and facilities, both public and private, are urged to intensify surveillance on measles and other diseases of epidemic potential for prompt action if they should occur. Districts and facilities are kindly requested to conduct prompt investigations and collect blood samples uh, for laboratory confirmation. You are expected, you're also expected to continue to intensify public education on the prevention of measles and other epidemic prone diseases. Now, the memo continued. All MM DDHS um, must, uh, must ensure that their epidemic preparedness and response plans for measles are updated accordingly and copies submitted to the Regional Health Directory through the Dis Disease Surveillance Unit on or before Friday the 10th of um, February 2023. That's this coming, that's tomorrow, mm -hmm. literally. Okay. So, it goes on to say that general vaccine supply to the northern region has been erratic since the middle of 2022. Checks in the region reveal that one that out of the 13 vaccines for routine immunization, only two, that's tetanus and tuberculosis, are currently in stock. Now, that's a problem. The situation exposes children to the risks of severe illness and disabilities from diseases like measles, pneumonia, among others. According to research, measles is a viral infection caused by the measles virus and transmitted through direct contact and air. It has a tendency to cause blindness, brain inflammation, flu, and fatality, mostly among children under 14. Such, as such, routine measles vaccination is recommended for children under 12 and, um, and 15 months of age. Okay. Now, I've had measles. Mm -hmm. I had measles when I was 11. It was not funny. Mm -hmm. it, it was, I thought I was going to die. And I don't know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking now that how does an 11 year old think that they are going to die? But you know, you, you, there's you, something wrong, you yes, can tell. Yes, you know, you can tell. Yeah. You know. it, was, it was terrible. Um, but we've had a vaccination program mm -hmm. and I'm asking myself right now that what's going on in the health service, Ghana Health Service. What's happening? What's going on there? So, so yeah. um, when I read the um, release, mm. okay, issued by the Regional Health Directory, yes, addressed to all district health directors mm. and cited by City. Yeah, it says, and I quote: "Given the current season, which presents one of the greatest risks for transmission of the, um, measles, district mm. health directories and facilities, both public and private, are." Edge to intensify surveillance on measles and other diseases of epidemic potential yes. for prompt action should they occur. Now, this has come. They have been very keen on surveillance. Yeah. And they have reported. Where's the prompt action? Mm. Okay. Where is the prompt action? Are we just writing this or we really mean this? Yeah. You know, because for it to um, come to the news for mm. Dinah to go do interviews yeah. and stuff, it means things are not really happening. Uh, no, so, so, so I'm maybe asking myself this question right now. How is it that only two mm -hmm. out of 13 routine vaccines exactly. that should be available? Because that's my issue. You are telling them to be um, 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 observant, mm. intensify your surveillance, yes. and pro uh, I mean, report as soon as it happens. Yeah, for prompt action. For prompt action. That, has, that, that first part has been done. Mm. Where is the other side? Mm. You know, what the doctors are supposed to do, 
they have done, what the hospitals are supposed to do, health facilities are supposed to do, they have done. How is the health directorate yeah. responding to this? Mm -hmm. Where is the prompt action? Hmm. We've been joined on the line by our colleague who brought us this report, Diana Ngon. Diana, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you. Now, Diana, um, since you did this report, has, has, do you have any further updates? I can say yes. No, Diana, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. I'm asking that since you filed this report, uh, have there been any other updates? So um, since we filed this report, the information we are getting from the health directorate is the um, figure we put out there as in 70, um, over 70 cases is inaccurate, which uh, we still stand by that because our checks from the directory um, indicate that over 70 cases of measles have been recorded since October. And even as of last night, some facilities we visited, there are still cases of uh, measles. Mm. I counted about nine children in the ward I visited. So these children have been isolated from other um, children from the children's ward. I cannot put the name of the facility on air. Mm. And so um, even my colleague called yesterday, Aladira checked in the um, Bimbila Hospital. Yeah. He said he had suspected cases and samples have been taken to the public health and reference lab for um, um confirmation but they are yet to receive the results and that has been the situation according to the nurses we spoke to each day they receive cases they take samples send it to the lab and the results never come and we are learning that these samples are taken to our crowd for i mean confirmation so before it comes back for i mean um action it means if a child is suffering, they, they could have brought into a worse situation. Mm. And the nurses are managing the cases at the hospital. And sometimes they discharge them to go when it's not so severe. And that is the situation. Diana. So, talking to the help. Yes. Dan, uh, when they said the 70 figure was inaccurate, did they give you their uh, version? Their so, version. So, so, I mean, we'll be speaking to the director. The director indicated that um, these cases were recorded last year, uh -huh. not 2023. Uh -huh. So um, we do not know whether the cases that are currently in the various health facilities are not um, nasal cases. But no, no, what I'm saying I mean, is, what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to find out from you is, okay, so it's not 70, it is 50. It's not 70, it is 100. Oh, no, no. no. They didn't say we anything about that. Yes, yes. Right. Did they also tell you when the vaccines are coming in? Uh, as to when the vaccines are coming in, they cannot tell us because we understand it's a nationwide thing. The, even in Accra, they do not have the vaccine. So the, those in the region are unable to tell when they receive the vaccine, and mothers are worried. Um, I spoke to some mothers in San Diego municipality, and one, one is um, six months in some weeks. She's been specifically the health center I mean, for weighing and also to take the routine vaccine, but she's been told it's unavailable. There's one who has a uh, one month, two week old baby. She says because of that, she's unable to even go to public spaces because her child has not received any of the vaccines. Because it's not only the measles vaccines that are unav that is unavailable, other vaccines are also in short in the region. Right. So what is going to happen now? What is the health directory doing about this now? What we do know they are doing now is the a memo they distribute, I mean, they send to the various um, health directors and the facilities to be on a list, send samples for confirmation and intensify education. That's what we know they are doing. So, having... so the children who have been infected, what is going to happen to them? Or we just leave them because we don't have vaccines and nothing will happen? Yeah, from, 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 from with the current situation, I think, I mean, the children are helpless, actually. Wow. Thank you very much, Diana. Yeah, so that was our colleague, Diana. Ngo. Ephraim, it's not, it's, not a good, it's not a good situation. No, I really wish we can raise uh, somebody from the um, health, Ghana Health Service uh, to uh, respond to 
uh, many questions that we have because it's unacceptable um, to find ourselves in this place here. And you know, if if the numbers are not correct, then what are the real numbers? Let's know the truth of what is happening right now. Um, the They're not vaccines, they tight lived. Yeah, exactly. The vaccines. Um, I mean, you're you're you you have only two. What's going on here? Why do we have all 13? What's what's the real issue here? You know, we spent millions and millions and millions of Ghana cities um, on on um, COVID, and even that one, there are so many questions around it. You know, so what's really going on here? What what's what's happening with the Ghana Health Service and the um, issue with the vaccination, especially for children? These are the children's vaccinations that um, are supposed to protect them throughout their lives. Well, we've been joined on the line um, by um, Dr. Brahma Baba Abubakari. Uh, Abubakari. He is the Acting Northern Regional Director of mm. Health. Thank you very much for your time, Doctor. So can you tell us more about the state of infection of measles cases in the Northern region and um, the absence of vaccines? Okay, so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to uh, maybe clarify some of the issues that you've been discussing. Sure. Yeah, because I think two days ago we read uh, a report from your your and um, I don't know whom your uh, correspondent spoke to, and uh, I think I heard her talking this morning. She knows me. She has never come to the office to talk to anyone. Well, I think there could be so, other people um, she can talk to as well. So what are the clarifications? Yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is that we, we didn't say there's no, there's 70 is not accurate. Okay. What we said was that the 70 was just for Tamale Metro. Yes. And the Tamale Metro, the right figure, as at end of December, the cumulative figure was 79. Okay. And uh, we started uh, having these cases uh, from July 2022. Okay. And um, like any other medical condition, when you suspect a case based on the presentation of the patient, mm -hmm. you need to um, take blood samples or whatever body the fluid is appropriate for confirming the diagnosis for the laboratory to confirm. Mm -hmm. And so along the line, all these uh, numbers, the seventy didn't come in one week or yeah. in one month. Like I said, it's, it's spread throughout the year. Okay. And the confirmation is done only at Luguchi um, in Accra. Yes. So there's been some delay. So sometimes the results come after all the patients have even been recovered and discharged. Okay. But for our record purpose, we need to keep these statistics. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's what happened. And right. um, Tamale so, Metro mm -hmm. was not the only... Um, district that was even affected and okay. northern region was not the only region affected okay so if the you can give part, us doctor yes, the second part about the vaccines mm -hmm. no no before we go to the vaccines can okay. you give us um the figures in northern region as of the end of 2022 they no we 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 had um about three districts that were uh, more affected than the others Yes. The hardest hit district was not even Tamale. That was Gushegu district, which is bordering of this uh, region. Okay. And then the neighboring district, which is Karaga district. In Gushegu district alone, we had over 200 cases at the time. Okay. So, uh, so and, uh, the, the, the ages of these patients, some of them are adults. Some are over seven years old. And some uh, between um, uh, seven to ten years. Some are even older, adults. Okay. And one thing about measles is that once you receive the vaccine uh, at age nine months, mm -hmm. and then um, now the current uh, protocol is that at 18 months, then the, 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 the child receives the second dose. Mm -hmm. It's part of our routine immunization. So the investigations we did when the outbreak uh, first occurred yeah. um, revealed that a lot of the people who were affected uh -huh. were not vaccinated, including the adults. Okay. So which means that the problem of whether they are vaccinated or not is even not a current problem. It's mm -hmm. Some of them date back to over 10 years ago. That people either were not willing to vaccinate 
or for whatever reasons i cannot tell as i speak do you but, have the uh, vaccines the 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 uh, you mean the measles vaccine or yes the measles vaccine because i heard you talking yes you know vaccines are like any commodity which um can run out of uh, at any point in time so if you go today and the vaccine is not there maybe by the following week or your next visit the vaccine is there so can you and, confirm uh, to us doctor if you have the vaccines now the measles vaccines yes yes yeah, we have vaccines in the country but you see the, the the distribution chain is that from the national level is distributed to the regions and from regions to districts from district to sub district depending on the uh, capacity to um, store the vaccines so if uh, at any level all the way to the community level which is represented by the chief compound if they have fridges that can uh, have temperatures that can contain all the vaccines, not only measles. Mm -hmm. You know, our uh, routine immunization, we are, we, are, we, are, we are given 13 different vaccines. Mm -hmm. So all of them, usually, they, they, they are distributed along the line. So right. you, may, you, may, you may have vaccine shortage in some places and then um, doctor. Uh, have vaccines available in other places. Doc so so you want doctor. A, a, a mm -hmm. question whether mm -hmm. we have vaccines in the region or not, mm -hmm. the, the answer cannot be yes or no. Because if I say uh, we, ha we have no vaccine, it means that we have zero. And but do you, have, I, do you have like maybe 2%? Oh, I can't give you the percentage or any figure to that. But what I'm saying is that it's distributed across the so, districts so, in the region. So if someone has measles today in the northern region, what, what, what would they do? What, what should they do? Okay, so um, let me also educate you a bit. Measles, the vaccine is not for treatment of the... I know what vaccines treatment. are for, but since you are unable to tell us whether there's a vaccine or not, since it's not a yes or no for you, I'm also asking further questions that now in a case where we have uh, measles infections what is the plan exactly so uh, measles is one of the self-limiting diseases so if um, somebody has uh, measles is the symptoms that you manage so whatever symptoms they present, that's what you manage there's no medicine you can give to to drink or swallow or injection for treatment of measles. You treat the symptoms the person is... Treated. That is also treatment. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. that is what we've been doing since last year. Okay. That's what we've been doing. And and as I tell you, all these numbers we've, 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 we've had for the for the whole of this year, we've not even lost one one child. No, that is person. that is fine. But so what does the... What's the figure now? Today is the 9th of February, 2023. What is the figure for measles cases in the northern region? Uh, I can't give you the accumulated figure as at this You can't even like give us the... maybe as of last month or by close of 2022? Oh, no, by close of 2022. That's what I said, by close of 2022, we have about 200 cases in Kushegu, um, then uh, the 79 in the um, Tamil Metro that I'm talking about. Because these were the two uh, districts that were hardest the rest were one or two cases, one or so two So do you so, have a complete figure for northern region? That's what I want to find out. Yeah, if or we have to do figure, mathematics. No, no, no. I'm saying if you want that figure, that can be provided. But right now, I'm not in the office. All right, okay. So uh, if you need that figure, your correspondent can follow up. You can give even the figure as at this morning. Okay. So, um, Doc, before you leave us, I just wanted to find out from you um, about this issue of the vaccines. You, you made mention of the fact that they are um, taken from national to regional, regional to district, and so on and so forth. There are 13 uh, routine vaccinations that should be given. Um, we, our report said that there are only two that are available. Is that inaccurate? That is not accurate. So what is available? We said we, we have all the vaccines. You, have, you uh, have all 13? Yes, we have all the vaccines. Okay. And so, mm. and so what, what then is the challenge and why is it that we are having what seems to be an upward rise in measles yes. infections? Okay. So what I, what I can say... Because scientifically, when we have what we call herd immunity, 
where we have uh, more than 70% of the people covered. Yeah. Most of the time, you, that particular disease becomes more or less like eliminated or a disease of uh, uh, which is not of public health importance. Yeah. So over the decades, uh, measles had almost been eliminated. So, but the va va vaccination has never ceased because it's always part of the routine immunizations that is given to children. Yes. So either maybe the population group has um, relatively affected our herd immunity, where maybe people could even bring it from other countries um, to affect the people who might not have been vaccinated or been immune. Because remember, measles, once you take the vaccine or you, are, you suffer the disease like uh, uh, the, those who have it now, you have the immunity for life. Okay. So if you have a lot of people with immunity for life, then most likely, even if an infected person comes, the chance of transmitting is less. Mm. But here is the case, we now have it among um, uh, some uh, people who have not been vaccinated over the years. And um, mind you, there are some who have taken the vaccines before and they've also had this. So these are uh, things that may need further investigations. Because right now, um, we can't tell the source of the, uh, the measles infection, and we can't tell uh, why even this particular one, the, uh, most of them seem to have the mild form of measles. Because in the past, it was associated with a lot of mortality. This seems to be a milder form of it. And then they also... Um, affecting some some few though the, our investigation one well, it uh, the outbreak occurred last year indicated that majority of the people who were affected uh, were not vaccinated so if we look at today as we speak and um we go to any health facility um a vaccination center in in um, the northern region what is the likely of, uh, likelihood of availability of measles vaccines? Um, I think um, even since the uh, beginning of the year, or the, since the outbreak, mm. if you go to our um, postnatal clinics where the child welfare clinics are being held, the places uh, are took every day. And children are there with their maternal and child health record books receiving the vaccine. You remember the vaccines are given per age. So once you reach a, a certain age, then the vaccines appropriate for that age is mm. given to you. Mm. So maybe, uh, I don't know whether your correspondent, they went around the places and nobody is there receiving any vaccine. I can't tell. Well, people could be receiving vaccines, um, but we also had some parents, some mothers also speak that, uh, given the ages of their children who have not received the vaccine. So like I, I mentioned, like any commodity, you can you can not have commodities that can never be out for a day or two. So if you you visit a facility, uh, maybe that's where your child welfare clinic is uh, this time, and uh, you, you, there are some of the vaccines that are not there. The, the doesn't mean that subsequent visit you will not have it. And this didn't start from now. That is always associated with our... Uh, uh, um, our process. Well, so, doctor, um, yeah, yeah, um, we, we just have to wrap up because of time. And as you've mentioned, I think that the right um, step to make now is to investigate and really look at these areas where there are no vaccines, because I don't think that a mother would just get up and say my child has not been vaccinated if indeed the, the child has been. So we can just take it up and um, look at where we have shortfalls and then make the necessary adjustments. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Doctor. All right. So we were speaking there uh, with Dr. Abraima, who is the acting head um, of the um, regional directorate. Yeah. You know, so, so at, at a point, I, I was a bit confused, mm. you know, to say that over 70 cases recorded, it's mm. not accurate, but we come back, we have like 200 cases, yeah. you know, which is even it's more just, alarming. It says, it says 200 in Gushagu, um, 79 yeah. in Tamale. Um, but like he said, I mean, vaccination is supposed to prevent disease. It's yes. Not, it, it, they don't use it to cure disease. Of so um, that's why my interest was mm -hmm. in. Um, preventing preventing if we have the vaccines why are we getting a, a high a numbers rise? why yeah. are we getting a rise you know um and 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with the, with the approach, but we don't well, have... Well, there may be, and um, yeah. I think that, I mean, when you're speaking to some of these issues, let's know. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that the regional director of health, you mm. know, is not too sure the cases... Well, know, he says that he, will get, he, he has, the, the, he's not in the office, so he can give us specifics when... When, when he gets to the office, so I think we But can. he was able to tell us that last year, so we even recorded in Gushigu this mm. figure. We, mm. I mean, we were able to give us some of yeah. these numbers, and yeah. if it's a priority, if something that we are worried about, I think that we should be able to tell that, oh, we recorded about, mm. you know, not give us maybe 217 cases, but As we can at least yeah. be told that, mm. yes, it's rising, and at this point, we are about 200 cases. We are about 300 cases, or roughly, yeah. this number but if you're not able to say anything at all then it's also yeah. a worry yeah anyway well we'll take a quick break breakfast daily has more that's coming up don't go anywhere be right back